Friday. Not only is it Friday today, but it's also Red Nose Day. So I hope you're all having fabulous, fabulous Red Day, raising money for the charity. The girls are very excited this morning, going off to school in their non-uniform with their bloopers on their ear, bloppers, blop. Purrs, forgot what they're called, and their red noses and their charity donations, except Isabel, whose school didn't do anything. But I guess high schools don't, do they? No. Anyway, me and Chris are just up this morning, sorted out the house, got showers, and now we're about to head off out for a nice long walk with Prinny. We're going for a wander down the canal, just because that's what we've decided to do today. The weather's not too bad. Bit windy. Prinny's definitely ready. She's stood there like, come on. Yeah, come on, ready. come on feet, come on humans, let's go humans. <laughs> that was the postman, and I think, well as about, you'll have to do it, I'm holding the camera. I was about to say, I'm very excited for what's just arrived, but actually, I think Chris is probably more chuffed about this than me, because he wanted this, if it is what I think it is, more than what I did. So, it is this, Owlet Smart Sock and it's basically, you can see on the box here, it measures and tracks your baby's heart rate and their oxygen levels and it lasts from, I think you get three socks in this pack, from zero to 18 months. So it's a little bit like, you know those those baby monitors a couple of years ago or a few years ago there was the in thing when i think isla was born and you could get like a sensor mat to put under the mattress and then it would alarm we never actually got one because the thought of having something like that just freaks me out a little bit and i'd constantly be sat waiting for it to alarm however chris is one of those really 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 badly paranoid parents that's constantly worrying and he said that he would feel much better if we got something for this baby just so that he could just sleep better at night in the first couple of months when SIDS and things like that are at a higher risk. He really wanted to get something and this is the newest thing that's out I think at the moment and so we bought one and I bet, are you happy that's arrived? Yeah, um, especially because it's actually brand new in box. It's brand new in box, yeah. We actually got this off of eBay. You can't get, I think you can get them in the UK, but they're shipped from America, is that right? I, don't know. I think they're only available in America and the UK at the moment, but they're shipped from America and we left it quite late to order. So we managed to get one on eBay um, for slightly cheaper actually. But yeah, it's properly sealed, so it was a good buy. Anyway, are we ready to go? Let's do this, guys. What? You, you are taking vlogging to a whole <laughs> other level. What on earth? Yeah, man. Are you planning on carrying that around today? <laughs> I'm going to try this morning on this walk because it's going to give us some nice cinematic <laughs> smoothness. What on earth? I'll give, I'll give it a go. It's ginormous. And it's heavy, man. It, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. So when I was in high school, I went on a school trip which was on a narrowboat, one of these bad boys, down this canal and we went down there for like a week and it was so much fun. But I was just explaining to Sarah because this guy here is just about to come through this lock and he's just letting all the water like, go down to the right level so he can move into this lock down here. And Sarah was like, how does that actually work? She, un she didn't understand it. I was just explaining to her. But still it's pretty cool, right? I still don't understand how, he's, how the boat was so high there. And he's got to get all the way down. Yeah, there. that's because in each lock the water goes down to that to the next level, and then the boat just drives through. Should we watch it? Yeah. So we just made it to our first stop, actually, the stop of the day. The only stop. The tea room on the canal. It's so cute here, we've got ourselves a little cabana going on behind us. You guys can see 
It's like a little outdoor thing with a little heater on the roof. Oh my gosh, you are way too giddy about this <laughs> gimbals. And... It's actually so hard vlogging with this today. It's ridiculous. I'm regretting bringing it out, but just because I can't use it properly. No, you're yeah. not. You're absolutely loving it. Babe, hey, watch this. Watch this what I can do. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> we all know I'm a bit of a geek, but it's all good. Anyways, we can sit outside here in the shelter of this little cabana with no wind or nothing. It's actually really, really nice. So we're going to order up a drink. Oh, we could go inside where it's actually nice and toasty. So we just ordered up some food and it just arrived. It looks actually amazing. A tuna and cheese panini, which looks really good. Look, there's my green as well on the side. See, I'm not cheating, man. I'm following it with a bit of green today. It's all good. This peppermint tea is so good. So we just dropped off Prinny back at home and we've just come up to Morrison's because the good thing about Friday is that Isla has an after school club today. So she doesn't get picked up until the same time as the other two do. So we get a little bit of extra time today. So we've got just enough time to pop down Morrison's and get some shopping in. Get some nice food shopping for tonight because Sarah's got a really tasty sounding pasta dish that she wants to try out tonight, which I'm really looking well, forward to. I was planning on doing it for me and the girls and planning on you doing you like a stir fry because it's actually, um, Cheeseburger pasta and you're being oh, yeah. healthy, so oh, right. planning on doing you like a salad or something. Oh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, back out into the hurricane. Woo! I found the tomato paste, well, tomato puree. That will have to do. I don't know if it's the same or whatnot, but they didn't have any tomato paste. Anyway, guys, it's just about time to go and pick up the girls from school. Just got enough time to go nip home and drop off this shopping first, though. <laughs> it was actually a little bit orcs at the tills just then when we were paying. I don't think the woman meant this to be orcs, but it was just a little bit orcs. She was like, the woman on the tills, she was like, uh, and she goes, How long have you got left? You're massive. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. And then she goes, is it your first or something like that? And I was like, no, I've got three three girls. And she went, ooh, did you not want to stop at three? I was like, no, I kind of wouldn't be pregnant now if I wanted to stop at three. <laughs> it's one of them questions you're like, uh, do I laugh or do I just laugh or do I ignore that she said that or do I just... Do I just answer it really awkwardly? <laughs> she was funny, she was trying to be funny, but it was a bit like, okay. Bless her. <laughs> Look at this little cutie. Did you have a good day for Red Nose Day? Yes, everyone said that I will look really cute with this dress on. We, well, we did try and get you to wear leggings, but little Miss Isla Ingham was having none of it and she wanted to wear this denim dress. But it still looks very, very cute. Esme's just- It matched my boots. Yeah, little mousy ones. Cat and a mouse. Cat and a mouse, that's cat, true. Cat, cat, cat. Mouse, 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 mouse. <laughs> <laughs> did you donate your money? Yes. Goody goody, and now you and Esme. It's time for our swimming lessons! Yeah! Do you love swimming lessons? Yeah. You go through stages, don't you? I've been like, I love it, I can't wait to get there. And then some weeks she's like, do I need to go to swimming this week? And I'm like, you do, darling, because swimming's a necessity. <laughs> Learning to swim is important. Yes. You all ready to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have a delicious dinner cooked and ready for when you get home. What is it? You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> have fun! Bye! Hi guys! OMG, I've actually just seen my hair and it's a big mess. Anyway, I've just got home from school and I've just quickly run downstairs and made myself a really nice hot chocolate and OMG, it looks so good! OMG guys, look at that. All of the marshmallows are melted and they look wonderful. So I've just done that because it's rather cold tonight. I feel like in the UK recently it's been really windy and really cold. If you live in the UK, comment down below what the weather's been like where you live because it's been really, really windy where we live at the moment. I might just quickly clean up the playroom because I never normally clean up the playroom for the girls because it's obviously their mess but I think I'm going to quickly clean up because it's a big mess. And I'm also feeling very, very generous today. Lucky for the girls. Okay, fam, I'm not going to lie and pretend that I'm some sort of a chef because we all know that I'm not. And when I do cook like a meal from scratch, it always tends to be the same meal over and over again, like stir fry or chicken fajitas or spaghetti bolognese or something like that. But I am getting so bored of having the same dinners and meals over and over and over and over again. So I'm on a few pages. One of them's actually a 
a slimming world page and there's some amazing amazing delicious looking really easy looking um, recipes on that page and one of those recipes people seem to be loving and there's a post pretty much every single day saying oh my goodness I made it and it's amazing my whole family love it it tastes so good and that is it sounds really random cheeseburger pasta I mentioned it today in Morrison's and everyone's just raving about it so I thought tonight I know let's try this cheeseburger pasta and see what it's all about so I've got all of my ingredients, aside from the mince, set out here and I'm about to start preparing. I need to peel the tomatoes. Did you just say burger pasta? Yeah. <laughs> Look at your hair. Cheeseburger pasta. Oh my gosh, who invented that? Someone. But I don't know who. You can help me make it if you want. What is that yeah. ginormous oh, hot chocolate? I was like, have you eaten all? I came down like five minutes ago and that was a full egg and have you just eaten it? Oh man. Busted. Can't blame dad. Busted. It wasn't a full egg. There was only a bit yeah, left. Like, it's the one out of there, isn't it? Anyway, guys, um, let's not speak of the, about the chocolate egg. Um, <laughs> so here's the ingredients. We're about to start preparing this now. Are you excited to try cheeseburger pasta? Mm-hmm. How are you doing, Izzy? See, this is actually my second time cooking, you know. I did it last time with <laughs> Dad. I think I'm actually getting a bit of a pro right now. <laughs> you actually do enjoy it, is it? What did you yeah. just say we should do every Friday? We should do like a mummy daughter like cook night. So like when mum, uh, when Dad and the girls go out swimming, we should do like a cook. Something Me and Isabel should every cook. Week. Yeah, we should challenge ourselves to do something different each week. Yeah. But then I remember the baby's due one. <laughs> might be strapped. Yeah, <laughs> for a bit, you know. <laughs> I'm sure he won't mind. I think <laughs> Prin is liking the smell of this um, food that's cooking right now, though. Like, <laughs> it's looking I good. Think I think you need to add the onions now. <gasps> Yay! Pour the onions in a little bit at a time because I think we might have cooked too, cooked too many. Okay. <laughs> And I've just transferred it all to a different pan because we need to add in our pasta and the other pan, the pasta would definitely be like flying over the top of the other pan. <laughs> so all we need to do now to finish off this meal is add the pasta, I think. Yeah. It's a one pot as well, is this? So you don't actually have to cook the pasta first. You can just shove it in the pan with the mint and the chicken stock and then leave it to, bring it to the boil and leave it to simmer for like 10, 15 minutes. And then hopefully, Dad and the girls will be home. Yeah, it smells so good so It does, it smells delicious. So far, it smells so good. It does. Alright, it's about first taste test. Okay, what we're saying? Mm. It's delicious, isn't it? Oh, I'm What are you saying, guys? Oh, no. I just gave these guys the five minute clean up before bedtime wind down starts. Let's go see if they've done a good job. Oh, you're in your bedroom already. That must mean you've finished all your cleaning and it looks amazing in the playroom, right? Yes. It's a Winnie Woo! Yeah! Guys, guess what just happened? So I was in the playroom looking for the toy boxes and I found my ring from Disneyland Paris like two, from two years ago. Hold up, let's just fill in the star ray. So I don't know if you guys remember, but back in January when we were in Disneyland Paris, Esme bought herself a new ring from... I was like seven years old. ...the Disney Village store, because last time we were in Disneyland Paris, two years before then, oh, yeah. she bought a ring and she lost it. She'd lost it, but she's just found that ring and from two toy years box, ago. like, how... I've been at Toy Box so many times and I literally just found it. That's so lucky, man. You and, yeah. Best make sure you don't lose that again, Ez. I know. Make sure you put it somewhere super so safe. I have to, but it doesn't, it's kind of, it's a little bit big on this one. It fits on this one, but I, I really want it to be on that one. But that's going to be my castle one that I got. But little Miss Savannah has got a little bit of a sore hand tonight, right? It's the other one. The other one. Let me see again. Where is it? Eczema. Oh, look. It looks like she's got a little bit of an eczema-type rash on her hand here. You can't here. really see 
here, but if you can see some red like there, yeah, a bit, a bit just there. there. Yeah, there's a bit of extra on my hand. Yeah. So I need a bit of cream. We're gonna pop some nice special cream on it to make it better. Here we oh, go. Oh, it's cold. What are you so happy about, Esme? I'm collecting Disney Disney rings. You got both of them on now. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool, man. Next time we go to Disney, let's get a big enough for my middle finger. Yeah, man. You need to put them somewhere really safe though, so yeah. you don't lose them for definite. What's up, guys? So I literally just got finished watching some Netflix with Sarah, and I realised that the car had absolutely no fuel in it whatsoever. And I was like, there is no way I am going to bed tonight and leaving that car with no fuel in it, just in case something happens in the night and we have to rush out and we've got no fuel. That is just not going to work. So I just came out to fill the car with some fuel and whilst I'm doing that, I thought I'd end the vlog in a bit of a different way tonight. Alright guys, so bear with me because it's way too quiet at the house for me to tell this story at the house but it's also too dark in the car right now to do it so I'm having to sit at the side of the, of the air machine which is just off to my right right now and get the most of this beautiful forecourt light and it's kind of weird because there's like no one out at this time of night right now it's almost near midnight there's no one about at all so anyone that's walking about is going to think I'm pretty weird sat here in a garage forecourt talking to a camera so bear with me now I don't want to make this story time right now like really long and drawn out I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys about it that's a really loud car I just wanted to talk to you guys about it right now because I feel like it's kind of appropriate because I posted something on my Instagram yesterday about my own struggles with mental health that I've had in the past and I have, I've had some absolutely amazing responses from you guys from that and a very very lot of you guys have asked me many times now over the last probably the last year to please do a video on my mental health struggles that I went through when I was younger and since I put that post up yesterday I have had literally so many messages asking for me asking me to tell my story and to to share it with you guys and I feel like I don't want to do a full video on its own about this although I could talk about this for absolutely ages I could tell you so many things that happened and that I went through when I was younger nothing bad to do with my childhood or anything I'm talking about mental illness struggles that I went through in my late teens and it almost nearly ruined my whole life I could talk to you about that for a long time but I thought I would just I thought I'd bring it up now in this video so you're all gonna see it and everyone that's been asking for it can kind of just have a brief rundown of what I went through and hopefully it can give some inspiration to anyone else that is going through the, the same as I went through back then but here we go so I guess it kind of starts if you go back to when I was in high school in my first couple of years of high school I struggled a lot it was a big transition for me to go from primary school to high school and I think that I took it more difficult than most kids, I don't really know why. Maybe I was a bit sheltered or something to the world, I'm not sure, but I was quite heavily bullied in the first couple of years of high school and it really ruined my self-confidence and um, I remember going into like the end of year eight into year nine um, really feeling really low and I don't know I just absolutely hated everything about high school I had a pretty rough time and I think that's where it all started for me back then I used to have kind of OCD type thoughts about germs and I used to be very paranoid about getting poorly or getting sick especially getting sick because I used to have a big phobia of throwing up so I I used to be very paranoid about washing my hands and things like that to the point where I would physically make my hands bleed from washing them too much but I do think that was like a coping mechanism to cope with the bad experience I was going through every day at school um, something I didn't tell my parents about at the time when it was actually happening until a bit later on but I think that was definitely part of my coping mechanism to deal with what I was going through day in day out of school. Then when I got into year nine, things changed. Rollerblading came into my life in a big way. It was a huge craze takeoff at the time. Everyone was doing it. I started doing it and I was good at something and I was, I was good at it, I was really good at it. And everyone kind of then wanted to be friends with me because I was good at rollerblading and I could do it. And I built up a really cool friendship group through rollerblading at the time and I was loving life it was great I thought it was the best thing in the world and then from then on into year 10 things were good I didn't do too well at school in them couple of years I remember 
I was a bit of, I wasn't a renegade by any means whatsoever. I just didn't try academically as hard as I could have done. I was more kind of interested in the fact that I had suddenly this friendship group through rollerblading and that's kind of all I was interested in through year nine and 10, which was, I feel a big mistake at the time, but it's one of them things that you do when you're a kid, you know, you don't really realize what you're doing until it's too late. And then it got to year 11 and it was time for GCSEs. And I knew by the time I was in year 11 what I wanted to do with my life. I was absolutely desperate to be a meteorologist and I wanted to go to Oklahoma in America and study tornadoes and severe thunderstorms because that was what I was absolutely obsessed with. I was mad interested in tornadoes and severe thunderstorms and all that sort of thing after watching the movie Twister which inspired me mega back then. Anyway, I knew that I had to get my butt into gear school-wise to be able to get the right grades, to go to college to do the right A-levels, to be a meteorologist. So in my last year of high school, I really knuckled down. And um, although these OC my OCD about germs and stuff like that was still always in the back of my head, I kind of, it didn't really affect me in my life at that point. I kind of had other things to do, like, and I was, I was happy in myself at that point through rollerblading and all sorts of stuff like that. Anyway, so I knuckled down, I got to college. I knuckled down so hard in college to get these grades that I wanted that I went from just being able to scrape by in maths to get onto the A-level course to actually completely like do, getting the top grade at AS. I was absolutely smashed it. I even won an award that year for how good I'd become at doing A-level maths. It was really weird. I kind of like had a really amazing teacher and I discovered that I had like a real niche for doing maths and I really enjoyed it and I loved it and it was obviously something that I wanted to do as a career so it made me much more focused and driven to do it. Anyway, it got to the end of my first year at college. I was doing really, really well. I came into my second year of my A-levels and I was predicted by all my teachers to get the top marks, A stars, all the way through my A-levels. I got really good recommendations from my teachers to go to university. I got a university placement in Reading to go do meteorology with half of my course study being in Oklahoma in America where I wanted to be. I was so desperate to be there because that's where tornadoes happen. Um, and I also got a placement at the University of Oklahoma as well to do the same degree. Um, I basically smashed it and I got really amazing university placement offers. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden sometime in the summer, well, as we were coming up to my A-level exams, my final exams, and I was kind of realizing that it was coming to the point where I needed to put all these grades on paper, I need to make it happen and get these grades to get into these places that I've been offered. I don't really know what happened, but I think it was just a combination of the massive amount of pressure that I'd put on my own self to get these grades and to get into university and to get this and to make this happen in my life. I put a massive amount of pressure on my own self and I remember just slowly and steadily feeling super, super stressed. Like I couldn't deal with how much pressure was on my head with revision and I don't know I had like obviously lots of family members and stuff that were really happy for me and I was getting into this degree course that I wanted to do and I don't know just a lot of different things piled up on my head pressure wise and it ended up kind of culminating in basically me having bad OCD and getting into the, the whole thing about washing my hands too much, being worried about germs. I got into a thing about being worried about my eyesight because you know you need to have good eyesight to do the career I wanted to do and I don't know I started obsessing about different things to do with my health that could potentially ruin the life that I wanted to have. So slowly over like a few months I noticed my self-confidence disappearing. I noticed myself getting very, very anxious all the time about everything in my life. I was getting anxious about my, my work, my grades, my health, especially my health. I kept, like, I, I developed a really unhealthy obsession with germs again from when I was younger, about getting poorly, about washing my hands way too much, um, to the point where I was, like, literally washing my clothes every time I come home from college before I came in the house, because I, I felt, I don't know what I was actually thinking at the time. I'd completely lost actual like perspective about everything to do with that but I was just I became so low and and underconfident about myself my everything about myself my appearance my personality my health everything I lost all kind of perspective on who I was and I, I guess it was just because of the pure stress that I put on myself. I got myself into a stage where I literally couldn't get out of bed in the morning anymore. I couldn't face the world. I was too worried about disappointing people, about not achieving the grades that I needed, not getting into the university, that my parents were so proud about me achieving. You name it, I felt it pressure-wise and I just 
couldn't get out of bed anymore. I can't explain the feeling that I had because I don't relate to that feeling anymore. Like, I feel when I think back to that time that it was a completely different person and I could never feel like that again. I don't feel like I could feel as bad as I felt then ever again. It was a very, very weird feeling. And thinking back to it now, I don't really know why it was that I kind of felt so low about my own self and I was so full of anxiety all the time about everything in the world and about my health and about, you name it, I felt anxious about it, that I couldn't leave the house. I physically couldn't leave my bedroom. I just couldn't go. I couldn't go to college. I ended up having to take like three weeks out of college because I literally physically couldn't get out of, I didn't want to leave the house. I just couldn't deal with the world anymore all of a sudden. You know, my college students were really worried about me. I ended up having to, in the end, defer and not take my A-level exams that year. I ended up having to defer them a year because I just missed out on too much work too close to where the exams were supposed to be. Which meant that I had to defer my university placement that I'd got and it was just my life just kind of spiralled into a big mess where I'd, I'd now faced the prospect of losing my university placement, of, of losing my opportunity to do meteorology and what I wanted to do and it just kind of was an endless cycle of ruining my self-love and self-confidence and building my anxiety even more because all these things were happening because I was taking time off college I had to drop my exams that year I had to defer my university placement and it just was an endless spiral anyway it got to a point where I just couldn't deal with it anymore and I needed help I needed someone to to help me get out of this funk that I was in to get get me out of this state I'd got myself in and my mum took me to uh, my GP who was absolutely amazing he was called Dr. Greywall and if Dr. Greywall is ever watching this video right now big props to you because you probably saved my entire existence back then and he did it so simply and so easily that I don't even it's kind of like funny when I think about this story about how it happened back then but we went to the doctors he was so lovely and so like um, so on my level that he just made me feel great instantly and I saw him a couple of times and one of the times he told me this thing to think about when I was thinking like thoughts about anxiety and when I was thinking thoughts about OCD and washing myself too much or worrying about germs and stuff like that. If anyone can relate to this when you have OCD you'll think something like if I don't turn the light switch on again or another 10 times when I get into bed something bad's gonna happen or something like that. OCD is kind of like that that's what you that's what you think in your head you think something bad's gonna happen if you don't ritually ritualistically turn on a light a few times or pick up an object or something like that. This one time when we went he said you need to get like a plaque on your wall that you can look at whenever you think about a thought like this or whenever you have doubt about yourself or you're thinking about something irrational that is making you anxious and feel horrible you need to look at this slogan and read it and be like yeah that's stupid stop reboot and start again and he said something to me and I can't say it because this is a family channel and I don't want to say like a bad word on this channel but I'm gonna say it in like a I'm just gonna say in the most peace politically correct way I can say it basically he said to me whenever you think about something anxious or a thought like that that's not good that's not healthy say to yourself that is a D head thought that's a D head thought say it to yourself reboot and feel better. Now obviously because a doctor, a professional doctor kind of said that to me, he said that word to me to tell myself that it was a, a D word, head, thought, that helped me. Because a professional had said that it made me laugh and it made me feel like at ease and it just for some reason for me it worked and then every time after then I felt like a bad thought or I felt down about myself I was worried or I was worrying about like germs or anything like irrational that I'd been worrying about I'd say to myself that's a deep head thought stop and it worked it worked for me I don't know why it did but it worked and slowly but surely I got better and my thoughts got better and I, my self-confidence came back, my anxiety went and I went back to college the following year, I finished my levels, I smashed the marks, I decided I wanted to do something completely different in that year, I went to what I went, I wanted to be a doctor to do medicine and that's what I went back to college to do. 
but that's kind of what that story is. I went back, I recovered, and I got back to myself again. I've never had that happen to me ever since then again. So that was when I was 17, 18, and I've never once had that happen to me ever again since. But I'll never forget that doctor and what he said to me and how much it impacted me in my head and how much it helped me. Just those words, that's a D head thought. That was a really brief summary of what happened to me. If I went into detail, it'd be a very, very long video. I went through hell and back back then um, and I went to the lowest of the low mentally that you can possibly be or I didn't see a way back I felt like my whole life was ruined and I couldn't see a way back from it but there is that was always a way back I just wanted to say basically that anyone that is going through anything like that or any type of anxiety or anything bad in their life where they think that there is no way out and they can't see any light at the end of the tunnel believe me there is always light at the end of the tunnel there is always the chance to fix things, there is always the chance to start again. So I guess for somebody watching this video, for all of you guys out there that watch these videos every single day, you might look at me and think that I'm one of the most confident people you could ever meet because I talk to a camera every day and I put myself out there in that way every single day. But, you know, I'm not at all. Underneath all of this, I'm not at all. And I feel insecure and underconfident and I hate myself some days just like everybody else does and I've been through all of that deep darkness mentally in my past but I've come through it and onto the other side and for anybody that is watching this I know this video is way way too long already and my battery is going to die but for anybody that's watching this that is going through struggles like that in any way shape or form just know that there is light at the end of the tunnel it doesn't matter how bad things seem they always get better always and as long as you're alive and well there is always the chance for a new chapter and there's always time for a new chapter and a way to make that happen. So never ever feel like there isn't. I hope I've just told that story in some way that makes sense to somebody, I don't know, I kind of feel like I just babbled for the last 20 or 30 minutes. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to cut this down so it's not too long for you guys to watch. But thank you so much for watching and for listening. Please give this video a video, please give this video a big thumbs up. Um, for anyone else that's out there struggling right now and comment below your thoughts your experiences and um, if anybody would be interested in hearing like a longer version of everything I've talked about tonight a detailed version then let me know in the comments and maybe one day I will do a longer more detailed video on it but thank you so much for watching I'll catch you tomorrow at 5 p.m. big love from me and everyone here and we'll see you then guys good night